taiga, endless forest, interpreted from old Slavic language, it means an end of the path, the end of the flow, which was sad and familiar. So it's not surprising most gates to the other world in myths and legends of Slavic people were situated there, including Baba Yaga's hunt. Taiga takes enormous territory, it's over one third of the whole Russia and about 17% of the world's land. Only the smallest part is explored enough, it hiding so many things, secrets and mysteries can't be explained with a common sense, creatures no one ever knew or seen before and spirits protecting those dark places from human invasion. The sacred shaman's shelters, places of power and ancient altars, that what explorers found there from time to time. Thousands of people got lost there and never come back. Nothing was found about them, including any marks of their presence. So this time I'm going to tell you a legend. One of many, the hunter tale, a true story of demon Leshe living in those places, and it's you to decide, is he a bad or a good, but let's bear in mind that we are only guests there. Hi, I'm Stacy, and we are talking about the other side of Russia. <laughs> So grab something strong, make yourself comfortable and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell, not to miss mysterious stories and legends of Slavic pagan Russia. And we are starting. In 1974, after graduating from the Technical College, Andrei Pavlovich Morozov was appointed as a headhunter of the Kamushinsky district of the Krasnoyarsk territory on the border with Evienke Autonomous District. Incredibly beautiful nature, virgin taiga, and cycling the full flowing Yenisei river, which amazed the young specialist. People who lived in small towns and villages closely united with nature made a good impression on him. Among the inhabitants there were many hereditary hunters professionals who very carefully treated the nature treasure surrounding them. And Maroz of being called to protect some areas of taiga wildlife had no problems with them. His area extended for more than 1500 square kilometers and the hunter was often on a move. One day, autumn 1974, Andrei went 100 kilometers from the center, riding on a horse, to a place where Tunguska river meets the majestic Yenisei. It was getting late. Glancing at his watch, Morozov decided to spend the night in a gatehouse 15 kilometers from place he was at at that moment. He turned his horse around, crossed the ravine and was about to get deeper along the hardly visible path into thickest taiga, when the horse suddenly began to move backwards. Morozov looked around, nothing that could scare him, but just in case, he took his carbine off his shoulder. The area was remote, and it was not a surprise to meet a bear or a wolf there, but that's not a bear. Meanwhile, the horse showed more anxiety. Suddenly, among the spruce branches hanging almost to the ground, Andre noticed a movement. He looked at his binoculars and suddenly saw a large body of some animal. The body was so big that exceeded in size even the biggest bear. Morozov continued to stare at the animal hiding behind the trees, when suddenly he realized that it was not even a bear at all. The animal's fur 
was not thick and long like bears, but short and elegant, like the mink, had a strange silvery shade. Soon Andrei realized that the animal stood on long, strong legs, and had arms, being so much like the monkey's arms. The mysterious animal jumped up. And rapidly climbed up the tree without making any noise at all. For a few seconds, Morozov lost the creature, but suddenly he felt a wave of cold air hit him from the back. The horse was so frightened that Andrei could hardly keep the balance in the saddle. And then he saw a creature standing really close to him, so he could see the smallest details of its frightening look. The appearance was so unusual that the hunter was frozen in amazement. The creature looked like a human, but of a giant size, with a height about three or three and a half meters. It also had a long tail, which was nervously shaking, and strange spherical outgrowths on its mighty shoulders. Especially, Andrei was amazed by the head of the animal. Not because on a soccer ball, set on a long neck, and two massive short horns grew from its forehead. His fleshy nose hovered over its fanged mouth. The creature's huge, empty eyes stared at the hunter without blinking. Suddenly, the creature sat down, prepared to jump, and Andrei unconsciously pulled the trigger. The shot rang. And the horse rushed to the guardhouse immediately. All night long, there were sounds of someone's footsteps behind the tightly closed windows of a hunter's house. Even the walls were shaking sometimes, as if someone was leaning on them with all the weight of his mighty body. Only in the morning, when it was quiet, Andrei was able to sleep a little. The sun was already high when Morozov woke up. There were no signs of someone was there that night, but unfortunately, the horse was dead, as if she fell with a long and deep sleep. Soon after he returned to a district center, he told the story to the oldest event hunter, Ivan Erkin. He smiled and said that Andrei met Ulmesh. The demon of Taiga, an ancient master of forest, or Leshi, meeting with him could turn to be a biggest sorrow or a biggest luck for a hunter. It had happened more than once that Taiga demon had rescued frozen hunters. He demands respect. Many local hunters brought him sacrifices, domestic animals or a part of their prey. Ivan himself took chickens, dogs and even milk pigs to one place in Taiga forest, two, three times a year. On this way he thanked Ulmesh for his rescue during the hunting 20 years ago, when a bear nearly turned him apart, but saw Ulmesh appeared suddenly and ran away. Following the Erkin's advice, Andrei Morozov brought a dead hare to the place where the guardian had met him a week before. And the next day, when he started to dig a cellar in the yard, he found it an old trunk filled with gold and silver coins of ancient coinage, as well as with emeralds and river pearls. That was Ulmesh expressing his gratitude for the accomplished sacrifice. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give this thumbs up or down as you feel it to be. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and leave the comment down below. Have you ever met something supernatural and mystical in your life? And I'm leaving you now for so long. See you in the next video. Bye.